Good afternoon and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Welcome again to another midweek live broadcast with yours truly, Minister Tanya Brown. I am so glad that you have decided to join me tonight. Good afternoon, Ms. Renfro. Thanks for joining. Hallelujah. Call a neighbor, call a friend, share it with someone, text someone and tell them that I am on live, midweek live, midweek live. Welcome, welcome. This is the day that our Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad on this Lord's day. Hallelujah. It's just good to be among the living tonight. Hallelujah. David says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good afternoon, Miss Clara Renfro. Thanks for joining me tonight. And this is Midweek Live. Tell a friend, tell a neighbor, share it with someone that I am live. Good afternoon, Dr. Boykins. Good afternoon, Minister Patricia Frazier. Thanks for joining. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I hope that all is well. I hope that all is well with you because even if it doesn't look well, we're going to claim that all is well anyway. Even if things don't seem so well, we're going to claim all is well. All is well. Just get that in your spirit tonight, Miss Teresa Thomas and Miss Marnette. All is well. Glory to an almighty God. Good afternoon, Dr. Holloway. We're going to continue with our study on J. Iris tonight. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Miss Aisha Whitfield, I taught J. Iris part one. And I talked about expect a miracle, expect a miracle. Tonight, thank you, thank you. Tonight we will continue, we will continue with Jairus. And tonight I will be teaching about the takeover. That's right, Jairus part two, the takeover. We are still in Mark's gospel chapter number five. And tonight we're going to focus in on verses 24 through 30, 24 through 43 tonight. So we're looking at part two, the takeover. The last time I taught um, Miss Enette Reese, Miss Yvonne Whitfield, the last time that I taught on Expect a Miracle, we looked at Jairus's decision to go to Jesus. And we talked about how going to Jesus, how going to Jesus, giving your life to Jesus is one of <clears throat> excuse me, the most important decisions that you will ever make. And then, Mrs. Preston, I talked about Jairus's supplication because you do, if you recall from a couple of weeks ago, Mrs. Riggins, that after Jairus went to Jesus, when he went to Jesus, he prayed. The Bible says that he worshiped and then he asked Jesus for what he wanted. And then we ended up talking about his invitation, his invitation, because Jairus told Jesus, come to my house, come see about me, come see about my problem. And Minister Stokes, Miss Annie and Mrs. Annie Reese and Mr. Re Reginald Yancey, we're going to pick up with that tonight. We're going to pick up right where we left off. When we left off a couple of weeks ago, Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house. Jesus had accepted Jairus' invitation and he was on his way, Mrs. Harris, to Jairus' house. So tonight, once again, for those who are just joining me, I'm talking about Jairus part two, the takeover, the takeover. The very first thing that we're going to look at tonight is the interruption, the interruption, Miss Lou Wilborn. And you do that, uh, do know, Miss Pam Harris, that along this Christian journey, you are going to have some interruptions. Jesus had interruptions, you are going to have some interruptions. And tonight, here in this text tonight, Jesus teaches us how to handle interruptions. He teaches us how to handle interruptions. We're gonna look at two interruptions tonight. 
tonight, the first interruption we want to look at is found in verse 24. Verse 24, Deacon Brown says, and Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, this is interruption that we encounter and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse when she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said if I may touch but his clothes I shall be whole and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt her body in her body that she was healed of her plague and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him turned him about in the press and said who touched my clothes and his disciples said unto him thou seest the multitude thronging thee and sayest thou who touched me and he looked around about to see her that had done this thing and then skip down to verse 34 Jesus tells her Mr. Zimmerman daughter thy faith hath made thee whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague so we see Miss Karen Dixon we see that Jesus was interrupted while on his way to Jairus' house. And why is this important? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Jesus was on his way to do the work of the Lord. He was on his way, Minister Finley, to see about Jairus' daughter, Robert Smith. He was on his way there and he was interrupted. Now, Jesus is in a crowd of people. The Bible tells us that he's in a crowd of people and people are pushing him they're touching him they are thronging him and, and and we see right here in the verses that I just read for you that this woman reaches down and she touches the very hem of his garment now Jairus remember Jairus had an urgent situation at home Jairus does not appear to get upset because see I believe that Jairus made it up in his mind that you can touch him you can poke him you can push him you can touch his garment you can pull his garment but I'm not worried about a thing because he's going to my house. Would you just tell somebody that Jesus is going to my house? Jesus is coming to my house. He made it up in his mind that it does not matter what they do in the crowd. Jesus is on his way to my house. Now, the one thing that I see here is that there were many people in the crowd. How do I know? Because the Bible said that the disciples wanted to know, what do you mean? What do you mean somebody touched you? There are people all around. And what you have to understand is that people, all of these people in this crowd came out to see Jesus. Some of these people came to be seen. Some of these people came so that they can go back and tell what they saw. Everybody didn't come to the crowd. Everybody didn't come come to the Christ for healing. Oh my God, everybody that is with you is not necessarily for you. I've told you that many times before. Everybody that was in the crowd was not there for a healing. Some of them came to see. Some of them came to be seen. Some of them came to go back and report it because you know how people are. When somebody important is in a place or not so important in a place, everybody wants to tell their version. That's why, that's, that's why the disciples wanted to know, what do you mean? What do you mean, Jesus, that somebody touched you? Of course somebody touched you. What do you mean somebody thronged you? Of course somebody thronged you. But see, what Jesus understood was that this was a special touch. This was not the touch of somebody who came to see and to be seen. This was not the touch of an onlooker. This was not a touch of somebody that came back just to report what was going on, Miss Sonia Thomas. This was a special touch because he recognized, he recognized that something powerful that life had left his body. Life had transferred from his body into the woman's body. There is going to be a transfer. There is going to be a transfer in some of your lives. There is going to be a transfer of healing. There is going to be a transfer of wealth. There is going to be a transfer of peace. Oh my God. I'm talking to some people that need some peace. The kind of peace that surpasses all man's understanding. And so 
so what you need to see about this interruption is that Jesus didn't get upset because this woman touched him. He didn't stop to rebuke her uh, because he could have. He could have. If you do know and understand Old Testament law, you know that because she had this issue of blood, she was not even supposed to be out among the people because she was considered unclean. But she came out anyway because she needed something from the Lord. So Jesus don't miss this now. Jesus uses this interruption for ministry. He turns this interruption into ministry. He teaches us something. Don't get upset every time that you are interrupted. Sometimes you've got to turn your interruptions into ministry. And right about that time, just when he said to this woman, thy faith hath made thee whole, the Bible tells us that here comes another interruption. The Bible says that this time the interruption is not within the crowd. This interruption comes from somebody outside of the crowd. Because the Bible says in verse number 35, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? This time, this time the interruption comes from Jairus' house. And once again, Jesus uses this interruption for ministry. He uses this interruption to teach us how to turn our interruptions into ministry. He was interrupted. He was interrupted, but he turns it into ministry. There is a bearer of bad news and he turns it into ministry. Don't, 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 don't miss that. No, because this is what he says. This is what he says. And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, what word? The word where it says, don't trouble the master anymore because thy daughter is dead. He says, he says to Jairus, be not afraid, only believe. Be not afraid, only believe. Now, I need to tell you something. Jesus, on many occasions, used interruptions as ministry. I want you to get that in your spirit. On one particular occasion, Jesus was teaching inside of a house. And the Bible tells us that four men, four men thought enough of their friend to take their friend to see Jesus. Why was this important? Because their friend was sick of the palsy. When they got to the house, there was no more room in the house and they decided to do something incredible. They took their friend who could not walk up onto the roof and they began to take parts of the roof apart. They And, and Jesus, right in the middle of his preaching, he was interrupted. He did not rebuke him, but he told the man, take up thy couch and go to thine own house. Jesus turned the interruption into ministry. I'm not making it up. If you want to read about that in the Bible, you can go to Luke chapter 5 verses 17 through 39. The Bible tells us that on another occasion, Jesus and his disciples were traveling away from Jericho. And one man by the name of blind Bartimaeus, who was by the wayside begging, he began to call out unto Jesus. He says, Lord, he says, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And once again, Jesus turned this interruption into ministry. You know what he says? He says, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And the man who had been begging, oh my God, he took off his beggar's clothes and he begged no more because Jesus had restored his eyesight. Still another occasion, another occasion in the Bible, Jesus was asleep on a ship in Mark chapter 4. And during this time when he was asleep, Miss Annie Reese, the, it, the, the Bible tells us that a great storm arose. It, it, it rose so much that water began to get in the ship. The disciples woke him up. They interrupted Jesus while he was sleeping. And Jesus turned the interruption into ministry. Because the Bible says that he got up and he spoke to the storm and said, peace be 
still. I'm looking at somebody right now. I'm looking at the names of some people who need just a little bit of peace. I came by to tell you that Jesus left it on record what you need to do in the middle of your storm. You need to stand up and proclaim peace be still. Peace be still. On still another occasion in Luke chapter 7 verses 36 through 50, you can read that later. Jesus was having dinner. He was eating a meal with one of the Pharisees. And the Bible says that in barged a woman. This was not just an ordinary woman. The Bible says that this woman was a sinner. And instead of Jesus rebuking her like the Pharisees wanted him to, he simply says, thy sins are are forgiven. That's right. So Jesus was interrupted throughout his ministry, but he turned the interruptions into ministry. Not only was Jesus interrupted, but can I tell you something? Jesus himself interrupted. That's right. Somebody said, what do you mean? Jesus interrupted sickness. Jesus interrupted death and Jesus interrupted Miss Gordon protocol. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter number 13, while Jesus was preaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day, he was, he was preaching. He was preaching. Now he was teaching in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He looked out in the synagogue. He looked back there in the pews. If they had pews back then, they may have had seats. He looked back and he noticed that there was a woman who was bent over. And the Bible tells us that he healed her body. He caused her to straighten up somebody that had been bent for 18 years. He interrupted her sickness. Not only did he interrupt her sickness, but he interrupted protocol because the rulers were upset that he had healed on the Sabbath day. So Jesus will, will and he can, and he does interrupt sickness. He interrupts protocol, but then Jesus interrupts death because the Bible says that while he was traveling to a city, he was traveling through a city, a little town called Nain, a funeral procession was going on. Don't miss this. And he stopped the funeral procession and he raised this man back to life. Oh my God. His mother was having his funeral and he raised this man back to life. So Jesus interrupted sickness. Jesus interrupted protocol call and Jesus interrupted death. The takeaway, the takeaway. What I need you to take away from this is to learn to embrace the interruptions and turn your interruptions into ministry. Did you get that? Learn not to get so bent out of shape because of interruptions, because interruptions are going to come. You've got to learn to embrace them and turn them into ministry. So right after, right after this interruption, Jesus uses this as another opportunity to teach. He gives Jairus a powerful affirmation. He tells him, be not afraid, only believe. That's verse number 36. Be not afraid, only believe. He teaches us the power of affirmations. Now, I know that many of you thought that affirmations were something new because we often hear life coaches talk about positive affirmations. We hear positive thinkers talk about positive affirmations. We heard a lot of positive information positive affirmations back in the day with a preacher by the name of Norman Vincent Peale. But I came by to let you know that positive affirmations were a part and are a part of biblical teaching. Be not afraid, only believe. Now, a positive affirmation, if you're not quite sure, is just a positive phrase that you repeat to yourself, which describes how you want it to be. How do you want it to be? You're not looking at, yes, yes, you see how it is, but how do you want it to be? Yes, you see sickness, but how do you want it to be? You want to be healed. You see poverty, but how do you want it to be? You want prosperity. Prosperity. You want wholeness. You call it the way you want it to be. When you receive bad news, Jesus teaches us 
the power of positive confessions, the power of positive affirmations. Be not afraid, only believe. Now, this is not foreign to the Bible because over Miss, Miss Fitch where. Miss Mary Thomas, Miss Ann Hutchison, Romans chapter 4 and 17 says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. When Jesus looked out, when, when, I'm sorry, when God looked out upon the face of the deep in the very beginning and he called the world into existence, he said, it is good. The power of positive affirmations. So we have looked at the interruptions. We have looked at the affirmations. Now, now let's, let's move on to the deterioration. The takeaway that I want to want you to get from affirmations is that the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, the power of positive affirmations. Paul said, whatsoever is lovely and of a good report, think on these things, the power of positive affirmations. When the Shunammite son, woman's son died, she said, it is well. So we move from the affirmation to the deterioration, the, to the deterioration. I'm not making it up. The messenger comes and brings devastating news that Jairus' daughter has gone from being sick in verse 23, my daughter lieth at the point of death to being dead. In verse number 35, thy daughter is dead. Now, a deterioration, deterioration is a process. It's a process where something declines. It is a change in the condition. It is a drop. And I am talking to some people tonight that have had deterioration in their lives since January. I'm talking to some people that have experienced some type of deterioration during this pandemic. You have had a decline in your finances. Some of you have had a decline in your health. You've had a decline in your mental stability. You've had a decline in relationships. You have had a decline in the way you take care of yourself. You have experienced some deterioration during this pandemic, but I I have good news for you tonight. Sometimes, my brothers and my sisters, deteriora deterioration happens quickly. And sometimes it happens slowly. In other words, it's a gradual process. Now, we don't know what caused the deterioration in Jairus' daughter's body, nor do we know the name of the condition that caused this deterioration. But what we do know, according to scripture, is that when Jesus gets this news, it does not appear that he gets in a hurry. It's not recorded in scripture that Jesus got in a hurry. But let me tell you something. When he got to the house, the Bible says that when he got to the house, when he gets to the house, there is a whole lot of commotion going on. There's a whole lot of noise going on. Why? Because people are already mourning the death of Jairus' daughter. And what you have to understand is that during biblical times, when people died, they hired professional mourners oftentimes to come in to wail and to mourn somebody's death. So Jesus gets to the house and he hears all of this noise going on. And Jesus, verse 39, wants to know, what's all this noise about? He says, and when he was come in, he said unto them, why make ye this ado and weep? Now, Jesus, right here, we've looked at the interruption, we've looked at the affirmation, we've looked at the deterioration, now we're going to look 
at restoration. Immediately, right here, Jesus starts the restoration process. That's point number four. He starts the restoration process. Look at verse 39, the latter part. He says, the damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. He starts the restoration process. Right here, he starts the restoration process with his powerful, this powerful declaration. He says the damsel is not dead, but she is asleep. And before my brothers and my sisters, the thing I need you to see is that before he restores her body, oh my God, he restores their ability of in him to believe the impossible. Don't miss that. Before he restores her body, he restores their ability, the people that were there, the mama and the daddy, he restores their ability in him to do the impossible. He restores their faith in him. He hopes to renew their thinking concerning the girl's death. And he wants you, my brothers and my sisters, to remain hopeful in the midst of a bad situation. He wants you to remain hopeful even in the midst of your storm. He wants you to remain hopeful while you are going through. And Jesus understood what I need you to understand tonight is that a whole lot can happen happen in just a little bit of time. He wanted you to understand that before you get the manifestation, you've got to renew your mind. Are you believing God for a miracle? I told you last week, expect a miracle, expect a healing, expect a better relationship, expect peace. Have you renewed your mind for that which you are believing God for? Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You've got to change your mind. Somebody once said that before you can achieve it, you've got to believe it. Before you can have it, you've got to already have it in your mind. You've got to see your body heal. You've got to see yourself walking up straight. You've got to see yourself walking around day by day without having a migraine headache. You've got to see yourself with your blood pressure normal. You've got to see yourself with your blood glucose level normal. You've got to see yourself with the pain gone in your body. You have got to see yourself being able to shop at the best of stores. Good afternoon, Pastor Brown. You've got to see yourself whole. You've got to see yourself delivered. You've got to see yourself walking in abundance. You've got to see your new husband for you before you get him. You've got to see your new wife before you get him. You've got to see it. So he restores, he restores their ability to believe in him for the impossible. He restores their faith in him. He says, this is what he says. He says, you said, he says, your diagnosis is that she is dead. But I have come to give you a new prognosis. She is not dead. She is asleep. I know you thought that this was the end. I know you thought that this was over. I know you thought that there was nothing that could be done about it, Mrs. Wilson. But I came by to tell you that she is not dead. She is asleep. I know you thought it was over. She is asleep. In other words, just as sleep is temporary, her condition is temporary. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how bad it seems. It is temporary. I don't care how bad it feels. It is temporary. Her condition is temporary. It is not final. 
it is temporary. Somebody just type in, it's temporary. It's temporary. It's temporary. That's right. Your condition is temporary. Whatever is going on or not going on in your bank account, in your pocketbook, it is temporary. That report that the doctor gave you, it is temporary because the word of God says, by his stripes, you are healed. I'm talking to you. That's right. You are are healed. The pain is gone. That's right. Those symptoms are gone. It is temporary. It is temporary. And notice here, right when he says this, they laughed him to scorn. Here's my subject, the takeover, the takeover. Verse number 40, notice verse 40, and they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out. Oh my God. Jesus goes into Jairus's house and Jesus takes over. Jesus goes into Jairus's house and he puts them out. Jesus doesn't go into Jesus's house and put and put people out. He doesn't put people out in his own house. He puts people out in Jairus's house. That's right. He takes over the situation. And this reminds me to remind you, whenever you invite Jesus to solve your problems, you better be ready for him to solve them any way he wants to solve them. You better be ready for him to solve them the way he wants to solve them. You better be ready for him to work it out the way that he wants to work it out. The songwriter said, anyway, you bless me, Lord. I will be satisfied. I will be satisfied. So Jesus puts them out. He takes over the situation. And the Bible says that he only takes Peter, James, and John, and the girl's mother and the father. He takes over this situation. And there comes a time in your life when you have got to put people out. You've got to get rid of situations. You've got to get rid of relationships. When Jesus comes to take over, you've got to get rid of some things. The reason some of you all can't find Mr. Right, because you got Mr. Wrong tagging along. Every time you go to church, every time you go to the grocery store, every time you go to the bank, Mr. Right is right there. He's been looking at you, but he can't get to you because you got Mr. Wrong tagging along. You've got to put him out, put him out. You got to get rid of some things. And some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. God told you to get rid of it a long time ago. God told you to get rid of her a long time ago, get rid of him a long time ago, get rid of that habit a long time ago. You got to get rid of it. And it is only when you do what he told you to do that prosperity is going to come in your life. I'm reminded, I'm reminded of the story of Jonah. Jonah, who had been disobedient and tried to run away from God. Oh my God, don't you know you can't run away from God? It doesn't matter where you go. He is there. And when the mariners discovered that he was running away from God, there they were in the middle of a storm. They were wrestling with the storm, couldn't understand why they couldn't get control of things. And they threw Jonah overboard. And the Bible says when they threw Jonah overboard that the storm ceased. Some storms are going to cease in your life when you do what God told you to do. That's right. You got to clean out the refrigerator. You got to clean out that cupboard. You know that stuff in there is not good for you. You've got to get rid of it. Your healing is going to come when you get rid of it. Your healing is going to come when you do what you are supposed to to do. So Jesus goes into Jairus's house and he takes over the situation. He puts people out of Jairus's house. He takes he takes over. The only people that are allowed to go in with him are Peter, James, and John, and the mother and the father. So he has already restored their faith in his ability. Now we're going to see the restoration, the restoration of her body. At least I'll hold you too long. He, after he restores their hope, he restores her body. Look at verse 41. It says, Talitha Kumi. 
Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. The Bible says that immediately, I'm not talking about the next day. I'm not talking about the next hour. I'm not talking about the next month. The Bible says that immediately she got up and walked. Immediately she was restored. Immediately. And I did tell you that a lot can happen in just a little bit of time. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight who may need this word, but I want to encourage you tonight that a lot can happen in just a little bit of time. If you have invited Jesus to come into your situation, when he takes over your situation, he may not take over it the way you want him to take over it, but he's going to handle it the best way he sees fit because he is God all by himself. And he does things that we don't do. He does things in ways that we don't do them because the Bible says that his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. His ways are higher than man's ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So get ready tonight for the takeover. If you have been expecting a miracle, get ready for God to come in and take over your situation. That's the word of God for you tonight. And I pray that that word becomes a blessing for you. I pray that God will build you up and he will show you the things that you need to do to receive a blessing from him. I pray that he will build you up and show you that he's going to handle your situation. Some of you are down in the dumps with the blues right now. Some of you are down and you're doubting God, but God is about to restore your hope in his ability. Glory to God, the takeover, the takeover. We're going to go to God in prayer tonight glory to God because you do that that do know that our Lord and Savior is still taking over situations it did not stop on the pages of scripture he is still taking over he's taking over your situation he's taking over my situation he's taking over hers and his he is still taking over and i want you to get that in your spirit tonight don't leave it on the pages of the bible he wants to take over for you teresa he wants to take over for you bernice he wants to take over for you marita just let go and let god have his way let's go to god in prayer tonight eternal god we come before you tonight we come to reverence your holy and your mighty name god you are a good god you are a mighty god you are a powerful god lord and for that we reverence you and we love you tonight lord god we love you because you loved us first God we love you God and we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you will forgive us for all of our sins and cast them into the sea of forgetfulness now God some of us have come to you for one thing tonight and some of us have come to you for another thing some of you God had some of us God have come to you because we have urgent situations just like Jairus had some of us have urgent situations God that we need you to take over some of us God have some serious situations God that we need you to take over so here we are God putting them at the throne of grace Lord we're asking that you will do something with it tonight in the name of Jesus Lord here it is we've been wrestling with it we've been toiling with it a long time here it is God fix it fix it Lord like only you can Lord God we thank you God for restoring storing our minds. We thank you, God, for the deliverance that has already come. We won't wait until we receive it, God, but we thank you in advance, God. We thank you that the headache is already gone. We thank you that the blood pressure is already regulated. We thank you that diabetes is already regulated. We thank you, God, that it is 
finished, God, that the enemy has finished his work in our lives, God, and that you reign, God. You are victorious, and we claim it right now. We claim it in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we ask right now, God, that you continue to do the work that you have already begun. We ask that you finish it, Lord, like only you can in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bind up, God, anything that is not like you, God, and we cast it back to the enemy in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we give you all of the glory. We give you all of the praise, God. We magnify your name in the mighty, awesome name of Jesus. We give you all of the glory. And it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The takeover, the takeover. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God build you up. And may he strengthen you. Until next time, be blessed.